Hey everybody, I'm Lives Nick Baumgartner here back for another edition of Ask Nick, our weekly Michigan football mailbag segment. Uh, we'll get right into it this week. A uh, number of different questions about the quarterbacks. Uh, <laughs> I guess we should have expected that. Uh, a lot of different folks have asked via email, Twitter, and otherwise if uh, if there's any chance Wilton Spate, uh, and you knew this was coming, Wilton Spate takes over Jake Rudock, and should Wilton Spate be the starting quarterback? My answer to that would be no. Uh, it's easy. I don't think so. Uh, I, I didn't get the sense... Um, from watching him over, I believe he's on the field for four drives last week in the win at, win at Minnesota. Uh, he did not look. If you if you take the entire thing and put it to uh, put it together, it didn't look like a guy who was ready to handle all that. Now, I mean, he, he he did make the throws he needed to make at the end of the game, and I think for Michigan that's absolutely encouraging and a bright spot. Um, he makes a nice touchdown pass there at the end, uh, and, and a big play, the two point conversion, where excuse me, where he lets Amara Darbo just kind of make a play. And win the game. It was a good read, too, so so some good stuff from him there. Again, working against a short field, the defense helped him out a lot. Can't ever take that away from him. It was a great, great moment for him, a great showing by him, and a great sign for Michigan to have a place for him to build from. Uh, if he continues to build from there moving forward, um, then could he push a really slumping Rudock at some point down the road? Eh, maybe. Um, and... and, and you know, that's, I think, the biggest thing here is because the first eight weeks, seven weeks, whatever, of the season, um, the conversation was Jake Rudock is what he is, and he's, he's struggling to throw a football downfield. The passing game's not explosive, but there are no other options. There's nobody coming in. There's nobody running, you know, out of the tunnel with a golden arm ready to play. There was nobody else there, um, you know, that type of thing. And while I still don't think there's anybody else that's really ready to take that job and do all the things it takes you know, get through a 60-minute football game, um, you know, the way Rudock can, because I, I think Rudock had some issues last week, but I also think he made some throws that were okay. There was some things he did a little bit better. I think you go back and you look at that game early in the game uh, for the first few drives, um, and maybe maybe a little bit longer even then. I think he was starting to pick it back up, I guess, at the end. But early on, he starts to, you know, you can see where he just, he puts one up to Jake Button, lets him make a play. Uh, I believe he did the same thing with Darbo at, at one point. I think there's a little bit more comfortability there. We talked to Jake Butt earlier this week, uh, and I asked him, you know, have you guys discussed more about Rudock? Did you work on that in the bye week? I'm just saying, hey, look, if I'm in single coverage, give me a shot. Put it up, I'll go get it. Uh, Butt said that they had worked on it a little bit. So I think that there were some encouraging things to take away from Jake Rudock a little bit, even though there were some disappointments. He turns the ball over. Uh, he misses on a long pass. He missed on some easy ones in the flat. Um wasn't perfect. He hasn't been perfect at all. I do think there was some spots that were a little bit better, um, but again, obviously areas of improvement before he goes out with the injury. Um, Spate, he's three of six. You know that was it. Three of six, twenty-nine yards. Three of six for twenty-nine yards. That's all we have to go on. Um, I don't get the sense that he's ready to take that job, uh, but at the same time, uh, if he continues to progress and continues to work and, and build on this confidence on, on what he had in practice, if Rudock's you know, you know, if you're sitting here in three weeks and Rudock still can't do anything with the offense, if he's still struggling, which I thought there were moments of that game where he was a little bit better than he'd been earlier in the year. Now the downfield passing, that's got to come. We'll have to wait and see. Rudock's still the guy if he's healthy. I think Rudock's still the guy if he's 65%, 70%, whatever. I think that's that's still of note. That's still the situation they're in, uh, and that's still the deal. And, uh, you know, I think, again, we've said this on the podcast um, you know, I think I've written this a couple different times. I don't think Michigan's answer uh, to its quarterback problems uh, or issues, whatever you want to call it, I don't think that answer's coming uh, until next year. And even then, I'm not sure if it'll be there next year. You know, we'll have to wait and see what John O'Corn can do if it, he, in fact, is the guy. Uh, and, you know, I had a lot of talk about Brandon Peters. Um, you know, Brandon Peters had a great season as a high school senior, but Brandon Peters is going to be a true freshman. So um, he might not even be ready to play next year. I think that you're still down the road from fixing a quarterback situation that was a real bad, it was a mess, you know, when he took this over. Jake Rudock's not here on accident. He wasn't here because Jim Harbaugh's mad at other people. He's the best quarterback on the team. Uh, and again, uh, the passing game is what it is. It's, it's holding the offense back for sure, but, you know, it's better than just giving up pick sixes and, uh, you know, fumbling the ball over the place and everything else. So, um, they're going to stick with Rudock. Uh, I firmly believe that if he's healthy. Um, but again, I think Wilton Spade, great moment for him. Great, uh, great building block to start from. Great, you know, great area to start. He's got he's got that experience under his belt now. He's been in a game, knows he can do it. Um, 
I was impressed with him on that last drive. I won't I won't take that away from him at all. But again, I feel like you know that's something for him to build on. That's not something that you say, okay, now springboard that into this week, and all of a sudden you're going to go out and throw three hundred yards and three touchdowns. No, I think that's something for him to build on for his own personal future down the road. So. Well, Spain, I'm sure we'll work hard to continue to push Jake Rudock. I think that that's important. Get somebody to push him. At least if you get somebody to push Rudock, maybe seriously push him, then maybe that brings out the best in everybody. I think that's the best you can hope for right now. Otherwise, if Rudock's ready to go, which it seems like from the coaches, uh, what they've said this week, Drevno and Harbaugh, Wednesday and Thursday, both gave indications Rudock was health was good, hadn't missed any practice this week. So we'll have to wait and see, obviously, I guess, on game day. Um, until then, Brennan and I will be back after the game to break it all down. Michigan Rutgers, 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, Big Ten Network. Join us for the live blog at 1.30. And until then, we'll talk to you guys soon.